Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Eric Bird, here at StopStrugglingNow.com. And today, I'm going to talk about, so you want to buy a home? You want to buy a new home? Well, we should talk about this. I've never made a video like this. But there are things you have to understand. Life of the consistency of the materials. Hear what I'm saying. Materials matter. And that'll be part two. Part one, we're going to go over the general timeline on how long things last in your home. Because a lot of times people are buying a home that's 15 years old, 10 years old. And then they're not understanding why there's a lot of maintenance and upkeep. You're also not understanding that you may need to know what has been the maintenance and upkeep and most owners may not keep a record. You need to know that. So I'll get into this and so much more. And welcome. Stop struggling now. Gear. Check. And please like, subscribe, and click the bell below so you get the latest updates. Now, let's get to it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, I want to thank you so much for being here. You should probably share this video with a lot of people because, again, the bull run for the home buying industry has started. There's going to be a lot of people buying because the interest rates are going to go down. This is no better time than to tell your friends if you're going out here to buy a home, then they should know exactly the timeline. They should study and understand depending on the materials that the home is built with. The infrastructure of everything does matter because you will be liable for whatever happens afterwards. This also will help people when they're looking at new construction of properties. New construction, pre-construction, you need to know these materials that should be there. And then that way you will understand how long this home may last before you have to start spending thousands of dollars on repair or upkeep and maintenance. So again, materials does matter. Let's get into this, shall we? Let's go to the Stop Struggling Now YouTube podcast page. Let me know what you think about the new channel art. I think it's pretty sweet myself. Anyhow, welcome to the SSN Nation. And again, I always point out a few of the members of the channel that YouTube is kind enough to show. So please join us. If you decide to become a member, thank you. If you're a subscriber, thank you. But make sure you click the all notification bell if you're a subscriber. Under the community tab is where the members get their information. They'll get one or two videos per month specifically from me. They'll get special messages from me. They'll also get the links so they can join me on any live stream, unless we have a guest, anytime and discuss anything they want to and they also have special emojis and there's always a little bit more all right let's get into it i'm just going to make it very simple and i'll make comments on this because that's what matters depending on where you live will also matter the higher the humidity that matters on materials living in warm and colder weather in other words the fluctuation like in the north let's say where it gets cold so you could have a 75 80 degree temperature you could also have a under 20 degree temperature that means materials react differently depending on the weather so less humidity more stable weather leads to longer lasting properties generally if it rains a lot where you live well remember rain is evasive water is evasive is what i should say and if there's any cracks or openings, water will flow through. So once again, the quality of the build will matter. Now, let's get into this. Starting it off, you can easily see 
You can Google this yourself. A new home can start to deteriorate due to a number of factors. This is weather exposure. So again, the reason why I talk new home and also existing home, you need to know the age of the home. That's going to come into play in the second half of this video. Weather exposure, weather can damage a home. It's very simple. That's what weather does. Whether it's going to be rain, whether it's going to be wind, whether it's going to be temperature fluctuations, whether it's going to be water. So again, all these factors come into play. Heat and your insulation all comes into play. Is it built properly? Again, substandard materials. Here we go right here. Using low quality materials can lead to premature deterioration. See this right here, when we're doing new construction and even after it's built and you walk in and you can see the low quality of materials just outright, what do I look for? I'll tell you what I look for. I go to the the faucets. I look at the ceiling fans. I look at the faucets. I look at those type of things. Why do I look at that? It's because from my experience, if they're giving me these cheap chrome faucets, and not giving me something that's a little nicer, that means then I'm probably need to go look in the attic and go see what type of insulation they used. Cause now I'm starting to, I'm thinking I need to go check everything and you should do it anyhow, but I need to see what you're doing. What are the, what is the roof made of? You guys will find out down below what you may wanna, you know, understand. Cause I want tile roofs. They last longer generally. That's what I want. I don't want fiberglass foam. I want some sort of standard foam that you sprayed inside for insulation. That's what I want. So that's why when you take a choice between a starter home, a track home, semi-custom home versus custom home, there's a reason the prices start rising, starting from the starter home. That's generally going to be a cheaper built home. The substandard materials will matter because instead of that home lasting 30 years before it tear, starts tearing down dramatically, it lasts 15 to 20. So we'll move on. Improper ventilation. See, poor airflow can trap moisture, which can cause mold and decay. This is why you not have to understand what you're dealing with. This is all what you guys should be doing. Here's the playbook. High humidity. Once again, that tears things up. High humidity levels can cause surface decay and corrosion. So again, that's a lot of water in the air. Just keep that in mind. So what do people do? They get the humidifiers. So they can actually try to keep their home with lower humidity, which is a very good idea. Yes, you're going to have to pay a, le a little bit extra electri electricity wise, but at least your home isn't deteriorating as fast over time all right so invasive plants this is very interesting because a lot of people don't care that there's plants and trees and things like that going through their roof and rolling around on their side of their side of their home or in the front it doesn't matter by windows you should have cut those things make sure they're gone they find every little crevice that can get into your house and there are openings in your house, most often in attics, most often, and also down below at the very bottom in a foundation usually, depending on where you live, they'll elevate a foundation or they'll put the little, uh, little fence down by your foundation and critters can get underneath in the crawl space. All these things come into play, all right? So keep these type of things because that also means you're going to have to maintain these areas to make sure there's nothing going on there. So those invis invasive plants, plants near the exterior wall can trap moisture, decay, and provide pathways for pests. See, this is exactly it. And speaking of pests, you might want to also say deterioration does matter with the components that they started talking about, substandard materials. You know if you have wood in your home, you're going to have a termite situation sooner or later more than likely, right? So again, you kind of start thinking, I want to limit that if I can. There's certain things. So here we go. Here's the lifespan. This is the part two, not part two that I'm going to have for a part two video, but this is the second half of this video. Some components of a home and their expected lifespans. 
This should wake everybody up. So all of you who are going to buy a home this next cycle, which is going to be in the next three years, more than likely when interest rates come down, and the home that you're buying is already 15, 20 years old. Look at this roof. Asphalt shingles last around 20 to 30 years. That's it. Your house is already 15 years old that you're buying. Now look, asphalt shingles tells me you're probably going to have to deal with your roof in the next 5 to 10 years. While high quality architectural grade shingles can last up to 50 years. See, there's a huge difference. So now when you buy a home, you're starting to say, what kind of shingles are these? And they say asphalt. You're like, oh, okay, I, how long am I going to own this house? Because you know, just like this says, 20 to 30 years later, you're going to have a lot of money to spend to fix your roof. Just saying. That's on the average, all right? Just so you guys understand. Drywall, it's probably going to last your lifetime if you have a new home. But what if the home is already 20 years old, 30 years old? Now you see drywall lasts 30 to 7 years on average. HVAC systems. This right here cracks me up because everybody does not understand. I, I've been saying this for years because a lot of people don't own homes multiple times. I tell people, your appliances, 10 to 15 years, you're going to have to replace them. Just count on it like clockwork. So there's people who go and buy a home. Oh, it's relatively new. It's 10 years old. And so you have your dishwasher. You have the nice refrigerator. You have the washer and dryers. They left all these things in there. And then over the next five years, you find out, oh, damn, the fridge went out. Oh, damn, the dishwasher went out. And you find out what it used to cost five years ago, seemingly like the price has doubled for these type of appliances. So that's why this is very fascinating when I see this HVAC furnace and the AC 13 to 15 years is what I always say. Here they say AC goes out 10 to 15 years. In fact, I'll read it. Furnace lasts 15 to 20 years and air conditioner lasts 10 to 15 years. What you should do is every year you should have your inspection. Every year. And of course, if you're buying a used home, then you should have an inspection before you buy the home. So you need to find out what's the situation. 15, if your house is 10 years old, 15 years old, it's telling you right now the HVAC system might last 15 to 20 years. AC unit, the house is already 10 or 15 years old. You might be saying, hey, uh, did you replace this AC unit? The person says, no, I bought the house seven, eight years ago. It's been fine. Well, now you have a problem because you better find out because if that thing is 10 to 15 years old, the AC unit should be going out. How do you extend that life? You have you pay the 50 to $100 to have your furnace and AC unit checked out every year. Like clockwork, if it costs you 50 bucks to 100 bucks to maintain it, you better do it because otherwise you're going to be on timelines that you're not going to like. You're going to stay there. The house is 15 years old and all of a sudden the AC goes up. The HVAC unit is messing up and that's a lot of money these days. Plumbing pipes. This is very interesting because most homes were filled with copper. Now, copper pipes last 50 to 70 years or more, like they say, but then it became hazardous and a few other reasons people stop using copper pipes because people steal them as well. But the, P, the PEX pipes can last up to 50 years or more. This is what a lot of homes are going to, that PVC PEX type piping, because it's flexible. And being flexible means you can cut easier, put on couplers. You can actually remove and re-enter it a little easier. It's a, a little more flexible but it doesn't last like 100 years or 70 years, as you can see here. It's like can last up to 50 years. So again, the PEX piping came out in the early 2000s. So here we are where somebody's going to buy a house in about six years that's already going to be 30 years old that has this type of PEX pipes in there, the little PVC type piping, and not realize that 20 years 
is the lifespan of that and it could already start failure already there's no guarantee on this it says up to 50 years so this is the type of things that you have to pay attention to and just what i recommend re routine repair and maintenance can improve the longevity of a home that is a must these are maintenance items that a lot of people say well my house it's only five years old i don't need to worry about anything until something happens and then you're getting the hvac guys over and going man my furnace doesn't work and then he's like hey man you got to change this you got to change that it cost me to fix it 300 bucks the parts cost three four hundred bucks next thing you know you're out like almost a thousand dollars um because he goes well it cost me uh i got a fee for showing up and all this other stuff and all you had to do was well you didn't maintain it so therefore the furnace got a little uh charred the burners weren't uh, properly working because you never cleaned them it's all kind of things that can happen and that's why you pay the 50 to 100 dollars every year just even once a year chimneys also a lot of people don't do chimney sweeps they don't pay to do their chimney either you need to get that done all right i forgot they didn't include this here but i'm just saying there's a lot of factors goes into when you buy a home and a lot of factors go into maintaining a home and a lot of factors go into when you're buying a used home so hopefully this helps you out i'm going to come up with the part two then i'm going to go with the brookfield guys and we're going to go over each one of these steps including your foundation and the siding of your home and the lifespan and expectancy of how long that's going to be so i'm going to get you guys into getting that semi-custom <laughs> upscale luxury is what i always say if you can get it in the right neighborhood because you have a quality of build that matters more than anything it's worth paying the extra 25 30 50 000, 60 100 thousand dollars if you have peace of mind and with all that said thank you for watching thank you for listening and please like subscribe and click the bell below so you get the latest updates. And I know it's hard out here. And that's why I'm doing this video because I'm trying to help people as this next bull run in the housing market should commence shortly. It's already started. So if you're going to go buy, you better know what you're looking at this time. Because after this, home prices are going to be off the charts. The average price of a home, I am expecting to be over five hundred and fifty dollars to $600,000 after this next bull run. So just keeping all that in mind, now you know you better find the quality of build before you buy the cheapest place. And with all that said, keep your head up, keep moving, and I'm out.